Hi students, today we are going to learn about the polyphenols. Polyphenols are the secondary plant metabolites which are abundantly present in the both plant and also once it is consumed in a different forms it will be metabolized and it will be present in the animal also. Polyphenols have been synthesized in the plants by both biotic and abiotic stress. Plants have synthesized for various purposes to combat the microbes as an antimicrobial, but for the humans 50 years back these secondary plant metabolites particularly the polyphenols have been attributed as anti-nutritional. For example, a polyphenolic compounds which are abundantly present in the tea will inhibit the ion absorption. Therefore, nutritionists thought these molecules are anti-nutritional. As the research advances, these secondary plant metabolites have been identified by doing research in this area and if they have shown a wonderful molecules like antioxidant molecules and they have been attributed in various chronic degenerative diseases and they will try to inhibit the even the cancer progression. So, polyphenols have different classes, they have been more than 15 classes have been classified and identified. And today for this class, we are going to learn what are the polyphenols, various classes of polyphenols, how they will be classified into various groups and their metabolism of both flavonols as well as the flavonoids in the human metabolism which we are going to learn. The plant secondary metabolites, they are called phytochemicals their nomenclature. Polyphenols broadly classified into three groups, phenolic acids, flavonoids and other groups like stilbens, lignans. If you look at the flavonoids is the major group which has C6, C, C3, C6 skeleton. Flavonoids further categorized into anthocyanins flavonols, flavonols, proanthocyanidins as well as isoflavones. If you take in the anthocyanins group, they are the red pigments in berries and many other fruits also which has a bright red pigments, the anthocyanins. Flavonols, NOLs, these are the monomers of quercetin which are present in onions as well as tomatoes. Flavonols, these are also monomers of catechin which is abundantly present in the tea, cocoa as well as apples. Proanthocyanidins is another group of flavonoids where these are the oligomers of flavonols. What we have discussed earlier, the flavonols, flavonols are the monomers but this group is oligomers of flavonols. They are like catechin, epicatechin which is present in the cocoa, tea, apples, peanuts. As I have mentioned is another important group is the isoflavones. Isoflavones example is soybean, example genistin, diadigin, these are the isoflavones abundantly present in the soybean. Subclasses of flavonoids. This classification is based on variations in the heterocyclic C ring. If you could see in the polyphenols the, their structure you could find three rings A ring, B ring and the C ring. And the variations in the C ring gives many of the products like flavon, flavonone, flavone, flavonol, dehydroflavonol, Flavon 3 OL, Flavon 4 OL, Flavon 3 4 Diol. These are the various subclasses of 
flavonoids which are abundantly present in the plant system. How these polyphenols are synthesized in the plants? Why they will be synthesized? As a defense mechanism basically these secondary plant metabolites are synthesized in the plants. There is a UVB radiation and also there is a possibility of wounding to the plant leaves, roots or stem or there are differences in the temperature. It may be very high or sometimes very low temperatures. Also there is a pathogen attack either on the leaf or at the roots or at the fruits or different parts of the plants there will be a sort of a pathogen attack can occur. In addition to this soil conditions like if the soil is deficient with nitrogen or low with phosphate or low with iron levels there is a possibility of stress induced polyphenol synthesis in plants. For example, people have studied in the UVB radiation when sun's radiation occurred majority of the polyphenols like anthocyanins, flavones, synapyl esters, isoflavonoids, soralins will be synthesized. And in some of the literature if you could see when, when we cut the leaf or there is an accidental wounds occur to the plants there is a possibility of synthesizing many of the polyphenols like comesterol, comarins, soralins, chlorogenic acid, ferulate esters, wall bound phenolic acids, lignin, suberins are synthesized in such scenario. And anthocyanins, anthocyanins are also produced abundantly when the temperatures goes to the lowest map. When the pathogen attack occurs to the plants, pterocarpons, isoflavones, renylated isoflavonoids, stilbins, comarins, 3 deoxyanthocyanidins, flavonols, arones will be synthesized. Stress induced polyphenol synthesis occurs in the plants. There were many polyphenolic compounds that way will be synthesized in various plants. Therefore, that is why this group of phytochemicals are in thousands. So, biosynthesis of some of the natural compounds we will learn. Parahydroxycinamic acid or parahydroxy, paracaumaric acid which can be further into various C1, C2, C3 compounds like phenolic acid or by acetinophenones or by reducing or by dimerization or polymerization they can be transformed to lignans or lignins or the paracaumaric acid by oxidation it can become the caumarins also and flavonoids and stilbens and in the combined forms hydroxycinamic acids can also be biosynthesized from the various compounds of polyphenols. So, what are the common dietary flavonoids? So, now we will learn one by one of the flavonoid subclass and the dietary flavonoids and we will also learn some of the examples of these flavonoid rich foods also. For example, if you take anthocyanidin group, the dietary flavonoids are cyanidin, delphinidin, malvidin, pelargonidin, peonidin, petunidin. These are the dietary flavonoids comes under this subclass. Examples of rich sources of these anthocyanins are red, blue and purple berries, red and purple grapes, also red wine. Flavonols, the subclass of the flavonoid, monomers like catechins, epicatechin, epigallocatechin, epicatechin gallate, epigallocatechin gallate, dimers and polymers of these compounds, thiaflavins, thiarubigins, proanthocyanidins. These are the dietary flavonoids under the subclass of flavonols. What are the examples for this group? Catechins particularly, teas are particularly green and white tea, 
and even the black tea is also rich in cat also chocolate grapes berries apples tea flavorings and tea rubigins are abundantly present in the teas particularly black and oolong tea as you are aware that tea will be of different kind like black tea green tea and uh, white tea and the oolong tea whether it is fermented or not fermented or semi fermented the classification takes place in the tea so the tea is rich source for both catechins as well as theaflavins and thearibigins proanthocyanidins particularly chocolate apples berries red grapes red wine or the examples where these rich sources for these particular flavonoids flavonones you should not be get confused with the words of english you should be very careful of looking at the difference between flavonoids flavonones flavonols there is only a difference whether it is a va or vo or va no nes these are the differences which you should really see and you can classify these dietary flavonoids so now we learn about the flavonones example of dietary flavonoids are hesperidin norigenin etc but if you look at the food sources citrus fruits and their juices example like oranges grape fruits lemons are rich source for both hesperidin norigenin now the other class of flavonoid is the flavonols quercetin campiferol myricetin isoraminitin these are the dietary flavonoids the rich sources are widely distributed in yellow onions scallions kale broccoli apples berries teas particularly you might have heard about quercetin in the onions as well as in the grapes also flavones group where the dietary flavonoids are epigenin luteolin and the food sources are parsley thyme celery and hot peppers are the food sources for some of these dietary flavonoids of the flavonols group isoflavones as i have mentioned earlier they are the rich sources for soybean soy foods and other legumes also examples of dietary flavonoids are diadigin genistein glycetin these are the molecules which are abundantly present in the soy bean soy foods also so what could be when we have looked at its classification its uh, various sources and now we will try to understand how, how much of the dietary flavonoids one really consuming worldwide the data if you look at of different populations estimated the 0.01 to 1 gram per day of dietary flavonoids have been consumed by the human major dietary sources are fruits and vegetables such as apple grapes onion rich in flavonols like quercetin anthocyanidin campiferol citrus fruits rich in flavonols hesperidin and norigenin soy rich in isoflavones genistein and diadigin the flavonols group if you look at the classification and it's a, a little bit about its structural chemistries also which we will learn the molecule has a double bonded oxygen atom attached to position 4 that's why they are called flavonols they are still ols because they retain the hydroxyl group at the position 3 like the flavonols the double bonded oxygen atom makes them like another class of flavonoids known as flavones double bond in between c2 and c3 ring that is c ring involved in uv screening due to their strong absorption in ultraviolet absorption a 325 to 400 nanometers and at the uvb 280 to 325 nanometers of wavelength the flavonols quercetin the most abundant flavonol in the diet and is found in hundreds of herbs and foods onions are especially rich in quercetin it has proven antioxidant effects 
which can deactivate many of the free radicals. The flavonols quercetin are mostly found as glycosides and if you look at their composition example is campiferol is an egg glycon but when it is attached to a glucose molecule and it becomes glycoside for that. So, there are more than 200 different sugar conjugates of campiferol are present in the plant system. So, if we look at the flavonols biosynthesis basically all this will start with the phenyl alanine 4 comaryl CoA factor then it becomes it, it transforms into naringen chalcone and naringenin then becomes dihydrocampiferol it forms then it will be get converted to campiferol in the presence of many other enzymes and this will lead to anthocyanidins and flavonols and quercetin too. The flavones close to the flavonols, but not so widespread example celery, parsley and some of the herbs. But without the OL there is no longer an hydroxyl group at position 3 on the central ring if you could see that. The flavones epigenin, epigenin a flavone with hydroxyl groups added to position 5, 7 and 4 prime areas where hydroxyl groups were added. Another flavone is the luteolin found in sweet red peppers. Both act as signaling molecules that induce NOD factors incompatible interaction with rhizobium bacteria that is nitrogen fixing root nodules mostly it is found in the legumes in legumes like alfalfa is an example. The flavones originate from the flavonones norinjenin the pathway if you can look at it has been synthesized. What are the major metabolizing enzymes which take part in this phytochemical metabolism basically the polyphenols both in the small intestine liver as well as in the colon area. Glucosidases, UDP glucuronidacyl transferases, catechol O methyl transferases, sulfo transferases, hydrolases, esterases, cytochrome P450s and others like glutathione transferases, quinone reductases. These are the major metabolizing enzymes which take part in the biotransformation. So, how this absorption and the biotransformation of the dietary flavonoids in the humans we will learn now. Once we take the flavonoids through the diet which reaches the stomach where the oligomers will be cleaved, the oligomeric flavonoids will be cleaved to monomeric units and once in the stomach they from the stomach they will be entered into the small intestine the jejunum part where it will be entered for further biotransformation of phase 1 and phase 2 metabolism where it will take at the liver and further down once it passes from the jejunum it reaches the ileum and the colon where the bacteria gut microflora they will also biotransform these flavonoids into phenolic acids and that will be sent through portal vein into the circulation and it will further metabolism takes place both in the liver and will be processed through the kidney and will be excreted through the renal excretion of glucuronides. In the liver the metabolism as either O methylated or sulphates or glucuronides which will be formed which will enters into various cells skin and brain and it will be used once this is glucuronides will be filtered through the nephron system and it will be excreted in the urine. The potential molecular sites of metabolic modification takes as a, as a glucuronidination, sulfation, methylation, oxidation and the cleavage. These are the major modifications takes place in the metabolism of polyphenols. 
So, absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, what are the factors which impact the biologic effect of phytochemicals? Intake of phytochemicals or precursors does not automatically equate with the exposure at tissue level. Inter-individual differences, transport across intestinal wall, biotransformation of enzymes that is phase 1 and phase 2, genetic differences and effects of other endogenous or xenobiotic compounds, intestinal microbiota, gut transit time, age, gender, physiological state of a person matters for the absorption and the distribution ultimately for the metabolism of these polyphenolic compounds. Diet food matrix chemical nature of polyphenol is very very important in the digestion, absorption, distribution and in metabolism of polyphenols. Food matrix particularly what sort of in, in which milieu these polyphenols are located also matters. For example, whether these polyphenols are a tissue like leaves or different from the storage organs like tubers like carrot, potato, sweet potato and the flower parts like that the food matrix matters a lot for the digestion as well as releasing these glucosides from the matrix for the absorption. So, therefore, diet and the food matrix also the chemical nature of these polyphenols and the presence of other promoters and inhibitors of various molecules also matters for the absorption, distribution and metabolism and excretion of phytochemicals in the human system. Flavonoids metabolism if we look at, they absorb mainly in A glycon form, possibly some glycosides. As I have mentioned, in nature majority of the flavonoids or the polyphenols are with glycosides. Peak blood levels occurs within 1 to 2.5 hours or up to 8 hours for some compounds. But basically peak blood levels of polyphenols particularly the flavonoids occur within 2 hours. Plasma concentration of these flavonoids will be in the range of 1 to 5 micromoles per liter. They circulate in blood as conjugated metabolites. As I have mentioned in the metabolism that this will be circulated in the blood like glucuronides or methylated or sulfated molecules. This can be partially metabolized by gut microbes also. The elimination or the half life is around 24 to 28 hours mostly through urinary excretion and the bioavailability has been assessed for the most of the flavonoids are in the range of 10 to 20 percent. People thought when these molecules are very efficient singlet oxygen quenchers or the radical quenchers, so powerful antioxidants has been attributed to these molecules. Then when it comes to the bioavailability, they absorb very poorly, it is only between 10 to 20 percent. So, dietary polyphenols have been postulated to modulate the development and progression of several chronic diseases. Example, age related vision loss that is age related macular degenerative diseases will occur where the some of the pigments are concentrated in the retina of the eye. Osteoporosis, this occurs basically in the women mostly where the calcium levels are low as well as the vitamin D. Therefore, there will be a bone porosity which takes place that leads to osteopenia and ultimately osteoporosis. Obesity is another chronic problem worldwide, India is no exception. So, these polyphenolic compounds 
some of them have been attributed works against the overweight some of the polyphenols have been tested and they work they work against hypertension they will try to reduce the blood pressure levels and uh, molecules like quercetin luteolin and many other compounds have been attributed against cardiovascular diseases and most of the polyphenols in the current scenario of diabetes as you are all aware that india is progressing towards diabetes in the world and sooner it is going to become the world capital for the diabetes so therefore these polyphenol molecules are the candidate molecules one can really think against diabetes some of the polyphenolic compounds have been attributed against diabetes particularly they can reduce the glycemic index and many molecules now people have been shown and still people are working with polyphenolic compounds against cancer so flavonoids what are the potential targets and the mechanism of action if you could learn so the cellular and molecular targets like enzyme inhibition or activation can take place in the presence of flavonoids modulation of transcription factors nuclear receptors and the gene expression modulation of inflammatory response antioxidant action cell cycle regulation competition with endogenous substrates for receptors modulation of cell signaling pathways and many other targeted mechanisms have been attributed to the polyphenolic compounds the nutritional genomics and proteomics area where diet may influence genetic and epigenetic events associated with several cancer processes these bioactive food components the polyphenolic group of molecules have been shown the dna repair apoptosis cell cycle carcinogen metabolism hormonal regulation and cell differentiation therefore these plant polyphenolic compounds have been known as powerful antioxidant not only in the area of free radical quenching but also in cell cycle regulation and modulation and inflammatory responses have been well attributed so if we look at the polyphenols when they have consumed the gut microbiota microbial proportion changes the addition or colonization and there will be a possibility of production of active metabolites which changes in bioavailability of some of the polyphenols because of gut microbiota the protective polyphenol so what are all the polyphenols will do so if you search in the literature many meta analysis and the research reports have been shown that this polyphenolic compounds anti tumor activity the work in the areas of cancer prevention and inhibition of progression in the area of chemo prevention inhibits the nf kappa b activation proliferation causes s phase arrest induces apoptosis of myeloid leukemia cells polyphenols reduces platelet adhesion monocyte adhesion anti inflammatory response this is very well thought process and useful mechanism probably people are working much in this area in the cardiovascular diseases prevention and polyphenols have been attributed in prevention of ldl oxidation polyphenols protects lung from dna damage and apoptosis polyphenols are also shown for neuroprotection polyphenolic compounds shown in reversible inhibition of herpes simplex viruses types 1 and 2 replication and more importantly many of the polyphenolic compounds have been attributed anti aging and it has been shown very important area in the inhibition of growth of h pylori and polyphenols have been shown in protecting the cerebral ischemic injury polyphenols protects from the uv radiation injury you could recall what we have discussed in the initially about the stress induced polyphenols the basic idea of 
protecting the plants also from the UV radiation, polyphenols were synthesized. In the same theory, the polyphenols have been now utilized in the various ways and means to protect from the UV radiation injury in the human population also. As I have mentioned already about the cardio protection of these polyphenols, also it prevents the prostate, pancreatic, gastric and thyroid cancers and, and even some of the polyphenols have been shown against the breast cancer. So what is oxidative stress? If you really look at the human at a cellular level, there will be a continuous flux of free radicals will be generated because of the metabolic pathways. An imbalance between oxidants and antioxidants in favor of the accidents leading to a disruption of redox signaling and or molecular damage which can occur. For example, if the free radical load is more, what happens? There is a possibility of DNA damage and ultimately cell death. Why this will happen? See, if you look at the constitutively present antioxidants at cellular level like superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione peroxidase, transferases, reductases are abundantly present. But when the cellular at a cellular level these oxidants are more than of antioxidants then there is a possibility of oxidative damage both to the lipids and the proteins and ultimately the DNA damage and there will be a cell death. Therefore, in addition to the constitutively present enzymes, antioxidants, there is a need to load the human system with dietary antioxidants. The known dietary antioxidants as we have discussed are the polyphenolic compounds. They are in actually every day people are discovering the polyphenolic compounds in some plant system. Therefore, identifying the plants with rich of polyphenols and particularly particular polyphenols for a particular problem should be identified and such food should be advocated so that there will be a less of oxidative stress at cellular level therefore it will not lead to the disease. So polyphenols the candidate molecules against the oxidative stress have been attributed and shown both in in vitro and the in vivo studies. Therefore, if you look at these plant polyphenolic compounds from the various food groups and identify those polyphenolic compounds in commonly consumed foods and try to advocate such foods in the balanced diet so that people will elevate the levels of these antioxidants in addition to the constitutively present antioxidants in the form of enzymes which are present and there will be a less load or the deactivation of free radicals can occur therefore cell will be healthy. Therefore if you recollect the Hippocrates the father of the medicine who has told let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food which he has told long back that a food only should be the medicine. So therefore to prevent a problem, a disease or to arrest the progress of the cancer, you have to identify a food which is rich in polyphenolic compounds. You can you really decrease the prevalence of cancer from the world. In India, we eat vegetarian food. Fortunately, most of these polyphenolic compounds have been synthesized in the various plant foods. In addition to the commonly consumed foods, there are many, there are many less familiar foods or medicinal foods which are abundantly present in India. There is a need to screen these foods for the polyphenolic molecules and list them with the resources of a particular polyphenol 
advocate them for a particular problem. In conclusion, polyphenols are secondary plant metabolites which are abundantly present in commonly consumed foods. Polyphenols have been classified into flavonols, flavonoids and other groups. Flavonoids have been further classified into many groups. I, the example of quercetin or luteolin, noringen, these are the very rich molecules which are abundantly present in onions, leeks, celery, berries and many other fruits. So, consuming these plant polyphenols will enrich the diet with antioxidant activity. Therefore, by consuming this we can prevent the cancer, cardiovascular diseases and many other chronic degenerative diseases. Thank you.